Hello everyone, this is Dexter and welcome to another video. London is one of the most beautiful places that I've been to this year. In this video, I am going to answer the question, how many London landmarks can I visit in a day? Before we start, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. I have one day in London and I want to visit the most number of landmarks given the time. I am very excited and hopeful to make the most of my day. Our trip starts at the Trafalgar Square, one of London's most vibrant spaces in the middle of the city. It is surrounded by museums, galleries, cultural spaces, and historic buildings. One of them is the National Gallery, which is an art museum that houses a collection of over 2,300 paintings dating from the mid-13th century to 1900. Too bad that for this tour, we won't be going inside the places that we will see as we have a very tight schedule. This is how the square looks like when you stand in front of the National Gallery. What's behind me is the Nelson's Column. The four lions at the base are said to protect the Nelson's Column. Trafalgar Square is the center of national democracy and protest. Rallies and demonstrations are frequently held at weekends on different political, religious, and general issues. The two fountains were installed because of two reasons. To counteract the effects of reflected heat from the asphalt surface, and due to the desire to reduce the open space available for public gatherings and the risk of riotous assembly. So that's it for our first destination, the Trafalgar Square. Now, let's take a good walk along the mall. Going to the mall from Trafalgar Square, you will pass through the Admiralty Arch. You will also pass by the statue of Captain James Cook. There are a lot of things that you will see just by strolling along the mall. One is the National Police Memorial, which is commemorating about 4,000 police officers killed in the course of their duties in the United Kingdom. The memorial consists of two distinct architectural elements, a black rectangular enclosure and a blue glass column. Not far from the National Police Memorial, you will see a huge open space. It is in front of Horse Guards, a historic building which houses the Household Cavalry Museum. Let's get off the Horse Guards Road and head back to the mall. The mall is a road in between Buckingham Palace at its western end and Trafalgar Square via Admiralty Arch to the east. The length of the mall is around 0.93 kilometers. This is the Duke of York Column, which is sited where Regent Street meets the mall. On your left, you will see a part of the chain of parks in the area, the St. James Park. It is a 23-hectare park, which was named after a leper hospital dedicated to St. James the Less. The park is bounded by Buckingham Palace to the west, the mall to the north, horse guards to the east, and birdcage walk to the south. When I was there, the changing of the guards just happened and I witnessed them going down along the mall. 
picking a spot on the mall between Marlborough Road and Buckingham Palace gives you a close-up view of the guards marching past. Normally, there are no barriers between the road and pavement, so nothing will block your view. The mall is a good spot to take photographs because of this. We are almost at the end of the mall. This is what the road looks like looking back. From this spot, you can already see our next destination, the Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace is the London residence and administrative headquarters of the monarchy of the United Kingdom. What you see is the Victoria Memorial, which is a monument to Queen Victoria located at the end of the mall and in front of the palace. The palace is probably one of the most famous tourist destinations in London. So, expect that when you come here, especially during weekends, you will find a huge crowd of tourists. Let's get a closer look of the building. You can stand just outside the fence and this is what you will see. I didn't stay here long and neither should you. We still have a lot of ground to cover. Earlier, we saw one of the royal parks, the St. James Park. There is another royal park which is just right next to Buckingham Palace, the Green Park. It is notable among central London parks for having no lakes or buildings and only minimal flower planting. Now, let's leave the palace area and proceed to our next destination and walk down Birdcage Walk. We will again see St. James Park from the other side. And in no time, we will arrive to our next destination, the Westminster Abbey. Westminster Abbey, formerly titled the Collegiate Church of St. Peter at Westminster, is a large mainly Gothic abbey church in London. It is one of the United Kingdom's most notable religious buildings and the traditional place of coronation and burial site for English and British monarchs. Right next to Westminster Abbey, you will find two of London's most iconic landmarks, the Houses of Parliament and Elizabeth Tower, which is commonly called as Big Ben. Unfortunately, in August 2017, refurbishment work due to last three years commenced on Elizabeth Tower and Big Ben. 
During this time, the tower will be scaffolded and the clock mechanism will be stopped for several months. Let's cross to the other side of Thames River through the Westminster Bridge. You will find lots of tourists taking photos here because of the view. It is a good viewpoint to see the London Eye from afar. Let's take a pause here. So far, we have seen Trafalgar Square, the Mall, St. James Park, Buckingham Palace, Green Park, Westminster Abbey, the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben, and Westminster Bridge. Make sure to watch the second part of this trip. Here are some of our next destinations. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Till next time, bye!